Hello everybody in the YXZ community. This is Eric with Dirt Launch Power Sports in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I come to you from our fabricators table once again where we have a whole lot of fun projects going on. But today we're going to look at the installation procedures for our YXZ alternator kit. You may have seen our previous video where I went over the various design aspects and components of this kit. So this video we're just going to jump into the install. At the end of this video will be a bonus section where I go into finer detail of our pulley design and why we did it the way we did. Uh, we feel that's a very important aspect of how this kit was put together. So stay tuned for that. Um, I'm not gonna interrupt the install portion with the information, so just hang tight. Uh, first thing we're going to do is pre-assemble the upright bracket for the alternator as you can see on this one it's set up that's how it looks when it's all said and done so what we need for this is a six millimeter and a five millimeter allen and for every fastener in the kit we highly recommend some blue loctite and you'll receive a hard work pack just like this and i've already removed the allen bolts we will need for this portion of the install so first off we have this little triangle support bracket it fastens to the back like so. So we'll just take one of these little bolts right to the recess. Grab one of five millimeter here. Just get that started most of the way so I can still get the second one in. And again, for the sake of this install, let's pretend I put some blue Loctite on these fasteners. Um, you don't have to slather it on, a little dab will do you, but just enough to keep things from, you know, vibrating apart. And then this additional reinforcement bracket here that also holds the bottom of the alternator with the two six millimeter fasteners here. And again, let's pretend I just put a little blue Loctite on there. Everyone just use your imagination. And we'll get these started. And again, these are going into aluminum, so you don't have to get crazy tight. The blue Loctite helps. So just get them in there snug and then just give them a little bit of a twist with one of your favorite wrenches here. And I'm just, I'm just really snug in these. You can get them a little bit tighter, but again, don't have to go crazy. All right, so the upright bracket is now assembled. Let's turn our attention to what's behind me is our mock-up jig where we will complete the install. Okay, here we are at our test chassis that we use for a lot of different setup and jigging and testing and so forth. Um, and directly in front of me, that's the CNC machine where we make a lot of our products, including the upright bracket for the alternator kits. And just this week, this batch of brackets came off the machine. Um, yeah, we're regularly making those as fast as we can because it's such a popular product. And we really appreciate everyone who's already bought one and uh, Everyone who will buy one in the future, we'll just keep making them as fast as we can for y'all. So back to the install here. So first off, some more tools we're gonna need besides the five and six millimeter Allen. Um, we need a 14 millimeter and a 12 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter open end wrench for electrical connection on the alternator. And then we'll also need a T30 Torx for the pulley assembly. So let's go ahead and put the lower bracket on. And again, just remember we're pretending that I'm putting Loctite on everything, but I'm not actually doing it, but you should. Um, just tighten all these bolts here. I like to get everything started first, just to make sure we're not having anything cross-threaded or not fitting correctly here. Get these all finger tight. That's good. Just snug these down real good. here and yes I know this is a lot easier on a test chassis like this and I'm cheating by not doing it on a actual YXZ that's fully assembled but for instructional videos this 
just works out a lot better. So, um, and from here, let's take a look at the actual design of how the bracket fits. Um, we designed it to sit up as high as possible so it doesn't create any ground clearance issues. There's a couple of kits on the market that we've seen where part of the main bracket actually hangs below the main frame rails, which really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to us, but uh, that's how it is. Um, so yeah, ours sits up nice and high to uh, not uh, sit lower than any other part of the YXZ that's already there. So now that we've had the bracket installed, let's go ahead and put the upright bracket on that we pre-assembled before. Um, grab one of the two smaller bolts here and the two longer ones. Um, the shorter one goes into the back of the triangle piece and the longer ones go into these two holes. And if you notice, these holes are elongated. So you have um, an opportunity to just, you know, make sure the belt's aligned perfectly. started and again pretend we have some Loctite on all these we can all pretend can't we okay and I'm just gonna snug these for now okay there we go as you see I have a little bit of movement you can get in there we'll get that lined up in just a second so now let's move on to the pulleys and yeah, I took the drive shaft out of this one, which, you know, again, helps with the install, but uh, again, it's better, I think, for the videos. And we take our pulley flange here, and the raised portions just fit right into here. We'll just press that right in there. And then we want to take these Allen bolts with the really shallow head on them and just get these all started. Just go around the horn here just to make sure it's all sitting flush. Okay, be good there for now. Just get two of them, kind of set it in there so we know it's straight. Perfect. Let's get a few more of these started here. Do. Makes me think these lulls in these videos, and maybe I should play some music, kind of make it a TikTok video. No? Yeah, probably not. If you think so, give me some music suggestions, and who knows, maybe next time Casey Hawk visits, I'll get him to do one of these videos with me, and we'll do a dance number. Wouldn't that be terrible? Alrighty. Got the flange bolts in. And again, we did put some Loctite on them. I saw it, didn't you? And then just tighten these down. Now here's an important thing to keep in mind if you're not aware. You should only spin the YXZ motor clockwise. Now the motor I'm working on here is, is it's a damaged one internally so we can actually freewheel it any direction. But if you spin these backwards, you risk the timing chain jumping, and that's gonna be a really bad day. So if you're rotating this around, if you need to rotate it ever, just like I said, keep her going clockwise, and you'll be fine. Now the second portion of our pulley assembly, the actual pulley, um, and again, just to go back to our original design that we keep talking about, is we made this as small as possible for a reason. Um, if we could have made it any smaller, we would have, but, you know, you really can't. Um, we could have, you know, easily saved money and made installation easier by making it a one-piece pulley, but in our opinion, that's just not the right way to do it. So again, I would uh, hand tighten these, get them all started first, because this pulley to the flange is a very precise machined fit, and you want to make sure it's not sitting there crooked. So if any of these fasteners give you any trouble going in, it might not be perfectly aligned, so just double check all that. And again, you know, put a little dab of Loctite on here. 
You don't have to slather it on a little dab will do you just enough to give it its gluing action if you will and i just i'm just old school maybe i like to hand tighten everything you know, everyone grabs the power tools these days all right so now we've got these all snugged Know that everything's sitting nice and flush. All right, where'd I put my wrench? And again, let's give these a nice little one last. And again, I just like to go around to make sure everything's sitting flush. And again, most motors don't move this free. This is just a bad engine. But again, if you're going to rotate the motor, do it clockwise. Get that one in there. This step is actually probably easier when it's assembled because it doesn't want to move so, so much. Okay. Everybody paying attention? Did I get them all? I think I might have missed this one. Nope. This one. Alrighty. Tighten all these down. Perfect. Alrighty. Time for the alternator. So here we have our alternator. We talked about that in the last video. We have these two fasteners left here. Whoops. Longer one goes in the bottom, holds the pivot point of the alternator. A longer one goes in the top, which is the tensioner. So I'll just set that one down here. through here just give this a little snug action then one more up here alrighty so there you go alternator is on and last but not least kind of important the belt we use continental belts for this one slide that over right there and now this is where again this isn't like it has to be like surgically lined up but you can give it a little bit of an eyeball and just keep them kind of straight together you know that's good and once you kind of have that in its happy place grab your 12 and tighten these up Again, don't have to go crazy with the tightening. You are going into aluminum and we're using Loctite. So just remember the old expression, when righty tighty turns into righty loosey, you tightened it too much. Okay, speaking of tight, is the belt tension. Now, I don't know where these internet comments come from. I just overhear them and people call me and tell me, but supposedly some people think that uh, you need to have three or four friends help you with a pry bar to get this belt tight. Um, it's an alternator. It's not an oil pump. It's not a power steering pump. It's not an AC compressor. It doesn't take a whole lot to spin an alternator. The belt does not have to be ridiculously tight. In fact, you can over tighten an alternator belt. So really just get it snug and tighten the bolt. It doesn't get any easier than that. And I mean, this that's just about right. And don't forget to tighten the bottom one too. that. There, perfect. Whoop, clockwise. Alrighty. Well, that the alternator is installed. Now, last but not least, we got to hook up the electrical harness. Now again, I just got to chuckle when I hear these things, but supposedly, there's people out there that are saying that uh, we uh, ground our alternator through a powder coated bracket, which I guess I could see how you would think that. But uh, the reality is we have a grounding post right here. Oops, I should have clocked this a little bit different. That's better. Busy talking, not paying attention. 
There's one last bolt in the kit just for this. So this is your direct ground, not going through the powder coated bracket. It's just nature of the internet, I guess. People just come up with these crazy stories. Grab my last socket. Probably could use a shorter wrench for this one. Cover up the red one here. And then these run up to your battery. So there you go, direct grounding right up to your battery, the way it should be. So there you have it. That's the DLP YXZ alternator kit. Um, you may notice on this frame, we have a few other goodies going on here. Like this is our stage three turbo kit. I'm working on some updates to that and a new video. That'll be kind of exciting once we get that released. Um, our billet water pump impeller. These have been really popular since the plastic ones are prone to failure and that's a bad day all around. This is our thermostat delete been one of our earliest products and of course our dry sump oil tank on full display that we're going to be mocking up some different fittings and an oil cooler kit should be coming soon um, a lot of fun stuff so yep here you have it this is a uh, again a DLP alternator kit installed ready to rock if you have any questions you know where to find me comments below let me know what you think of the video what I should do different next time and also stay tuned for part two of this video we're going to go into a fun deep dive on pulley design or sizing, I should say. Okay. Uh, thanks, everybody. Be safe out there on the trails and see you in the next part of the video. Hello, Eric from DLP again. Uh, thank you for sticking around for part two of this video. Um, won't be as exciting as the install. Um, probably some boring technical stuff, but we feel it's very important because we feel a lot of questions regarding the design of our alternator kit because there's been a lot of comments are made online and around the community and we try to educate people as to why we do things the way we do so starting off we're all familiar with this piece um, the reason why we went with a two-piece pulley is because if you go with a one-piece pulley you are bound by the width of this bolt pattern okay if you try to make a single piece pulley this small like we did to these bolts, you're going to be drilling right through the belt groove and that's not going to work. So what happens is by the time you raise the pulley size big enough to clear everything, you're looking at about a five inch pulley, okay? Which in and of itself doesn't seem like a big deal, but there's far more to the story. So that's why with our two piece design, we actually, you can see the bolt patterns here. This is the, for the flywheel, and this is our bolt pattern. We're able to move that out, but then have the pulley shrunken down to the inside where it all works together to get this as small as possible. Um, and the reason why that's important is what the reason for this video, because everybody knows about pulley ratio. You know, you don't want to underdrive or overdrive your alternator. Um, so if your engine is spinning at X RPM, you don't want your alternator spinning too fast or too slow. Everyone understands that. And that's measured in revolutions per minute. However, belt speed is a linear speed. That's measured in feet per second, meters per minute, or even miles per hour. And that's what we're here to talk about. So a couple vehicles, real world cars, I thought up to uh, compare the YXZ to. The first is a Ferrari 355. Now, okay, why the Ferrari to YXZ video? Well, it just so happens a local friend of mine is currently undergoing some engine maintenance on his I'm helping him with, and we have the pulley sitting on the bench, so I measured them and figured I'd use it in this video. So those engines spin up to 8,250 RPM. It's a 128 millimeter drive pulley, 60 millimeter alternator pulley for a one to 2.13 ratio. So that alternator is humming along at 17,600 RPM when an engine hits red line. But we're not here to talk about that. What we want to focus on is the speed of the belt, which is 3,317 meters per minute at full RPM of that engine, which is 123 miles an hour. Okay. Now, more of an example we're more used to, how about one of the LS truck engines or the Vortex as you call them? 
So I have one of these and I went out and measured these too. So here we have a seven and a half inch or 190 millimeter drive pulley, a 61 millimeter alternator pulley, and that's a one to 3.11 ratio. And that engine maxes out at around 6,100 RPM for a 19,000 RPM alternator speed. But again, the belt speed is 3,641 meters a minute a little bit faster than the Ferrari's belt, but still, you know, similar. But this is also a serpentine belt. And these actually have a little higher margin of what they can spin safely. Um, and the Ferrari has a multi-ribbed um, belt. So now let's move over to the YXZ. That's why we're here. That five inch pulley we talked about, this would be for a non-DLP kit, is 127 millimeters. So we can keep all the numbers similar. And a common ratio would be about 1 to 1.25, would give us a 102 millimeter alternator pulley. So at 10,500 RPM, when you're singing along in your YXZ, it's about a little over 13,000 RPM for the alternator. Okay? But look at the belt speed 4,189 meters a minute, or 157 miles per hour for a V belt. That's crazy fast. Because you also got to remember, the bigger a pulley gets, we've all been on those carnival rides where the room's spinning around and the further out you go, there's more force trying to throw you off. So that's double whammy for this bigger drive pulley with a V-belt. Not only is it moving crazy fast, but because that pulley's bigger, it's all that inertia trying to throw it off the pulley. That's not good. So the DLP kit, we made the pulley as small as possible, which is 92 millimeters, quite a bit smaller than 127. And our alternator pulley is 69 millimeters. And that's for a 1 to 1.33 ratio. So at full red line, we're spinning the alternator at 14,000 RPM, very similar to the larger pulley set. But look at the belt speed. We're at just over 3,000 meters a minute, or 113 miles per hour a much safer, safer speed margin for a V-belt, especially in an off-road vehicle. So I hope this makes sense. Um, kind of difficult to explain, but uh, kind of want to get it out there. So any questions, comments, you know, throw them at the bottom of the video here. Uh, if you have any questions, give us a call. But again, this is why we went through the extra trouble and expense of our two-piece pulley system over a much easier to manufacture and install larger pulley that just fits right over everything. Okay? So I'll leave this up for a minute. Of course, you can pause it and take a look. Um, see you in the next video. Probably going to do some intake stuff, maybe some exhaust stuff. Just anything you want to see um, for us to do a video on, please let me know. We're open to any suggestions or for anything. And, I'm going to be uploading quite a few dyno videos here as the weeks go on. We have quite a catalog of YXZs and other off-road vehicles we've had on our dyno here at Beyond Redline, which is a sister company to Dirt Launch Power Sports. Okay, well, thank you for watching, and again, uh, look forward to seeing your comments online. See ya.